ஹரி கிருஷ்ணா ஓம் அஜானதி ீபாயுஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ணீவாதாஷ்ண
Wick. Why? Why? Certainly. Certainly. Pura. Pura. Before. Pura. Before. Brahmane. Brahmane. Unto Lord Brahma. Unto Lord Brahma. Aha. Sweet. Tuska be satisfied. Satisfied. Aradita. Being, being worshipped. Bhagavan. Bhagavan. Vasudeva. Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna. Translation, Your Majesty Maharaja Parikshit, know that all that I have described in reply to your proper inquiry is just according to the version of the Vedas and it is eternal truth. This was described personally by Lord Krishna unto Brahma, with whom the Lord was satisfied upon being properly worshipped. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Zomprabhad Ki Jai. Jai. <clears throat> the two different ways of reaching the spiritual sky and thereby getting emancipation from all material bondage, namely either the direct process of reaching the kingdom of God or the gradual process of process through the other higher planets of the universe are set forth exactly according to the version of the Vedas. The Vedic versions in this connection are Yada Sarve Pramuchante Kama Yesya Hridi Sritaha Atha Martyo Mrito Bhavati Atra Brahma Saman Samashdute Bhradaranyaka Purpanishad 4.4.7 and Ter Chir Habisam Bhavanti Brahman Brahma Bhradaranyaka Upanishad 6.2.15. Those who are free from all material desires, which are diseases of the, diseases of the heart, are all are, are able to convert death and enter the kingdom of God through the Archi planets. <coughs> These Vedic versions corroborate the version of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the latter is further confirmed by Shukadeva Goswami, who affirms that the truth was disclosed by Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, Vasudeva, to Brahma, the first authority on the Vedas. <coughs> the disciplic succession holds that the Vedas were uttered by Lord Krishna to Brahma, by Brahma to Narada, and Narada and by Narada to Vyasadeva, and then Vyasadeva to Shukadeva Goswami, and so on. So there is no difference between the versions of all the authorities. The truth is eternal. And as such, there cannot be any new opinion about the truth. That is the way of knowing the knowledge contained in the Vedas. It is not a thing that to be understood by one's erudite scholarship or by fashionable interpretation in, interpretations of mundane scholars. There is nothing to be added or nothing to be <coughs> subtracted. Because the truth is the truth. One has to accept. After all... Some authority, <clears throat> the modern scientists are also authorities for the common man for some scientific truths. The common man follows the version of the <clears throat> scientist. This means that the common man follows the authority. The Vedic knowledge is also received by, in that way. The common man cannot argue about what is beyond the sky or beyond the universe. He must accept the versions of the Vedas as they are understood by the authorized disciplic succession. In the Bhagavad Gita also, the same process of understanding the Gita is stated in the fourth chapter. If one does not follow the authoritative version of the Acharyas, he will vainly search after the truth mentioned in the Vedas. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. So good to be with you again. Thank you for allowing me to uh, be here. So we're coming uh, to the end of this chapter. Uh, second canto. Second chapter, the Lord in the heart. There's been a, a description of Krishna uh, in his universal manifestation and as Paramatma, the super soul, and how devotees or yogis can travel to different areas of the universe depending on our desire and what we deserve. So Srila Prabhupada is speaking in the purport, or first, uh, Shukadeva Goswami uh, says to Maharaj Brigitte that uh, everything that he is describing is in accord uh, 
uh, to the version of the Vedas and his eternal truth, and it has been spoken by previous authorities. Srila Prabhupada begins to purport that there's two ways of reaching the spiritual sky, direct or indirect. As Lord Krishna uh, tells us uh, in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, whatever we think of at the time of death uh, will be large part determining where we go. And for one who is devoted to him, who is in love with him, who understands him uh, as transcendental, uh, the supreme source of everything, the devotee goes directly to Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada and the other acharyas quotes verses from other Vedic scriptures. And Srila Prabhupada goes on to explain to us that uh, all this is coming through disciplic succession from Lord Krishna to Lord Brahma, from Lord Brahma to Narad, Narad to Vyasadeva, and on down. The point is that the spiritual truth is eternal. It's not anyone's guess. It's not something to be changed. Nothing to be added, nothing to be subtracted, Srila Prabhupada writes. And then Srila Prabhupada says, one has to accept, after all, some authority. Especially for things that we can't see or we have not seen. For example, off Africa, there are the islands of Madagascar and Mauritius and the Seychelles islands. So we don't know. I don't know. I, I would suspect that none of us know uh, in any particular town or village on those islands what someone is doing or what's happening. What the, you know, We don't know. But if we had a WhatsApp chat with someone in Madagascar, we could know. That person could tell us, yes, this is happening. There's no other way, really. Um, so for many things uh, in everyday life, we rely upon authorities. We rely upon someone to give us information. So same thing, especially for uh, spiritual reality, Atashi Krishna Mani Nabhavan Gram Indriyai Sevan Mukhe Hijibado Swayameva Saratyada. This verse from the, I believe, the Padma Purana, that Krishna and the spiritual realm, it's not something that we can see with these eyes. It's not something that we can understand very much with our material senses. Atashi Krishna Mani Nabhavan Gram Indriyai. The senses, the Indriya, our senses, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, perceive spirit or consciousness along with so many other things, as, uh, so many things we can't see, as we have discussed before. Telephone, cell phone signals, we can't see them, but they're, they're there. Uh, for sure, and the cell phone is able to uh, perceive. The cell phone, in a way, is able to perceive and uh, detect the cell phone electromagnetic signal and translate it for us. And so we see the cell phone signals through the phone, through the instrument, so to speak isn't it? So, so many things uh, are like that. And spiritual reality, Krishna, is exactly the same. And there's many things that we don't know right away, but we have experience later, isn't it? Uh, um, take cooking, uh, some recipe. So we don't know by our, we may not know that this recipe will produce uh, the Malpur correctly. But we have confidence and we follow the instructions and then hopefully the Malpur <laughs> or the Sandesha turns out good. Uh, so, uh, but we don't know. But we uh, we, we follow the authority. We, we have confidence and then later we find out. Or a doctor, right? 
Um, we don't know if the prescription, the instructions will cure us, but we have confidence. We follow them and usually, or hopefully, uh, we get experience for ourselves that yes, I ate, I changed my diet, I did these exercises, I took this medicine, and uh, this disease lifted. So then that's our experience. No one can take that from us. No one has to tell us anything. It's not a matter of faith anymore. Well, maybe we have faith in our own experience, uh, right? Uh, but it is realized. In the Vedas, we have the two words for different types of knowledge, jnana and vijnana. So knowledge is just the theory uh, that this medicine will work. And then vijnana, we take the medicine uh, or we uh, follow the recipe and then we get our own experience. We have discussed before and we may have heard Srila Prabhupada quote, atato brahmatagyasa that uh, the purpose of this human form of life, the career, the career, often uh, we humans, we have careers. Someone, a registered nurse, or someone as a geologist or whatever it may be, uh, we have, and we do that for our whole life. Or maybe we have two different career paths. But it's something that we are dedicated to for many years. So the Vedas tell, atato brahma digyasa, that now that we have this human form of life, uh, our career, really, is to understand Krishna. That is our career. That is our first focus. And everything else that we do is only to help that. This is what Krishna wants. Uh, so many things Krishna wants, uh, but really, manmana baba man bhakto, manjizi mam namaskuru, you become my devotee. You bow down to me, worship me. Uh, what else? Always think of me uh, and become my devotee. Love me. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveki chakvataha. One who understands me. Uh, is eligible to go back to the spiritual world and never return. So these, this, uh, Vigyana, this understanding Krishna, really understand, not just, you know, family tradition. Well, yes, we are Gujaratis, we worship Srinath, and, you know, we are this, we worship Shiva, and, but we really don't know very much about it. <laughs> you know, just or in the any religion, say the Christian religion, why do you go to church? Well, my mother told me, you have to go. Well, the Bible says you have to go to church, uh, which is true. Uh, but we are, we are, we're not meant to have that kind of superficial family uh, habit. But atato brahma digyasya, we are meant to be, actually, God realized, each of us me and you, all of us, uh, which doesn't mean, uh, as we learn, it doesn't mean necessarily some big intellectual endeavor and that we, uh, only people who are good in school and, uh, you know, scholars. No, no, that, that's, that's not necessary. Uh, that, that's not the idea. Realizing Krishna uh, does not require um, to be uh, like a scholar, but it does require uh, hearing uh, the information and following the instructions so that we can have vijnana. So the spiritual master, the whole relationship with the spiritual master, I forget the verse uh, that uh, uh, the spiritual master is... is uh, the whole thing is that one becomes closer to the spiritual master in order to receive the transcendental knowledge. And Srila Prabhupada explains in the first canto that the spiritual master explains the spiritual understanding, just as Shukadeva Goswami is explaining to Maharaj Parikit. Uh, and the disciple listens and asks questions.
questions. Um, this is right. This is the whole first and second ch uh, chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto one, second cha first chapter, second chapter. When the sages of Naima Sharanya, we say that verse, Nasta Pareshu, Badreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, right? Srinvata Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana, Riddhyanta Sto Bhajani, Vidanoti Sarits, the whole thing is hearing about Krishna. Hearing and chanting. So Srila Prabhupada explains that the disciple inquires from the spiritual master, uh, and the spiritual master explains, uh, doubts are cleared. And this is the whole point. There's no other reason for having a spiritual master other than this uh, atato brahma digyasa. It's not a matter of prestige or some kind of pride. That, oh, I have a guru or something like that. Uh, social prestige or some kind of habit. But we're, uh, all of us, we are meant to seriously have a specific intent that now I have my spiritual master and my intent is to realize God. Yeah, automatically, more peace, more happiness, more strength, all this will come. But the purpose, atato brahmatikyasya, that let me be really uh, God realized. So it's not a matter of uh, not as much faith anymore. But I have seen God. I have experienced Krishna. What's that in the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita about the spiritual master? Do you remember that verse? Uh, Arya Govinda Prabhu? Tadviti Pranipapate. Tadviti Pranipate na Parikrishna. And that means? Uh, we have to inquire from the submissively from the spiritual master who has known the, who has seen the truth and then uh, by rendering uh, service to him we get all the knowledge. So there you go. By rendering service. And what is that qualification? Gyaninas Tattva Darshana. That he has seen the truth. And we are also meant to be jnani, jnaninas tattva darshana. That is absolutely a fact. It is not something which is reserved for the spiritual master and no one else knows God. That's not true. Of course, we could, we, we, we will never equal the depth of under a realization and love. Uh, but we are also meant to be jnaninas tattva darshana. It's the whole point of this Krishna bhakti. Someone may say, oh, you're going to realize God. You're going to see God. Yes, why not? You see the prime minister sometimes. <laughs> you see him on the telly. Uh, so yes, it is possible to see God, experience God. Yes, you may not know about it, but it's completely just so many things to learn. And this is something that can be, uh, this is a path of education uh, if you know about it. So, uh, but uh, as Srila Prabhupada is making the point here that the spiritual knowledge especially is not something that it's not, uh, we can know by, he says, erudite scholarship. Uh, we have to hear, at least in the beginning, about Krishna. And then uh, following the, the instructions, then we get our own realization. So that that's it. Uh, and understanding what is what is the whole point of devotional service uh, what is the point of life what is serving Krishna what does Krishna want yes Krishna wants people to know about him Krishna wants prasadam distributed books distributed uh, through the spiritual master we have our service to Krishna uh, taking care of our family uh, taking care of ourself so th these are all certainly part of Krishna Bhakti. But the original, uh, the root of it, as Srila Prabhupada writes in Nectar Devotion, does someone remember he writes there's uh, two principles which are the first and most important uh, in all of this Krishna Bhakti. Does someone remember what those two are? Yes. 
It's a nectar devotion. Is it Anukulasa Sankalpam? What is that? Uh, meaning, uh, uh, whatever is favoring uh, for devotional service, we should take it up. And what is not favorable to Krishna consciousness, we, we should we should reject it. Yes, yes. We find in the uh, Upadesh Shamrita, the nectar of instruction, the six uh, principles that are favorable, six that are unfavorable. And in the Nectar Devotion, Srila Prabhupada writes, the first and foremost principle is to always remember Krishna and never forget him. And then he writes, every other rule is just to help those. So this is our success. This is our success, really. Main success. That no matter what happens, no matter what the external, what happens externally, no matter what anyone sees or doesn't see, within our own mind, we are never forgetting Krishna. That is our success. We may try to accomplish this, accomplish that, but am I remembering Krishna? That is my, and other people who don't understand, who haven't under, who haven't heard, or perhaps they, they, don't, uh, for whatever reason, they don't value the importance of these instructions. They may judge us differently. Oh, you're not such a good devotee. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Maybe. But our Srila Prabhupada says, if you are remembering Krishna always and never forgetting him, that is our success. Of course, we should try for it. Uh, good results in the service of Guru and Krishna, always. But if all else fails, and all we can do is, yes, I remember Krishna. We're cooking for the Sunday feast in the temple, and we burn. <laughs> we burn the main preparation. So that's not good. And why did that happen? But I can say I didn't forget Krishna. <laughs> so the temple president may chastise us, and the devotees may not like us, and we may even feel uh, so many things, but from Krishna's point of view, did you remember me? Yes. Uh, so then, and then, so then he says that everything else is to support that. So, so that's it. Whether we should do this or do that, will it help? That's all. Very simple. If I sleep nine hours, will it help me to remember Krishna better? If it does, then I'll do that. If it doesn't, then I won't. It would mean within the regulative principles, of course. Uh, should I take this job? Should I live here? Should I do this? Should I, Will it help or not? You see? Uh, and then uh, to remember, of course, we have the different practices. You know, the hearing about Krishna, the chanting. We have our japa. We have the deity worship. Uh, these things um, make it possible to always remember. Uh, if we don't do the uh, practices, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, to follow that first instruction. Especially if we have busy life and we're doing so many things. So important is to keep our sadhana. Uh, because we ask, well, how how I'm at school, I'm at my job, I'm in my family, I'm with my children, I'm this, I'm that. How I'm going to remember Krishna? By keeping your sudden, that's how. Or we will remember better. Perhaps we will not remember all the time. Uh, but certainly uh, we will have more success uh, to the extent that our sadhana is very good. Therefore, we must keep that to our best ability. Sometimes we're not able for some reason, uh, but to our best ability, uh, each week, each day, uh, we try to uh, be as uh, attentive and uh, present and to uh, do our different practices of sudden bhakti. And why? What are, what are some of the reasons what is what are some of the benefits of always remembering Krishna? Who would like to offer there? What have you heard about that? 
What are the benefits of remembering Krishna? We can get a chance uh, to go back to go back to back to home, back to get it, because as Krishna promises in the in the Bhagavad Gita, whoever thinks of him at the end of the life, he will go to Krishna Loka and then never comes back to this material world. Very good. We never know when the uh, the uh, what do you call it the uh, from yeah, space yeah. some part of the spaceship lands on our head. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> So, anything else? That's that's. What more can we say? But there are even other benefits. What? Hare Krishna. Yes. What is that? When we remember Krishna, he will remember us as well. Oh, very good. That's very nice. Yes, love. Love attracts love. Right? Even in human life, if you look at someone, they'll look at you back. All right? Something else? All right. So you want me to uh, try and remember. See, I was trying to hope you would remember, but I guess I'm not off the hook. So uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that one who meditates upon him becomes transcendental to the modes of nature. That's really helpful, right? Because we're all bothered uh, different times by Rajagun, Tamagun. And so Krishna gives a solution. He gives medicine that to the extent that we are really, truly uh, aware of him, uh, meditating on him, then even the modes of nature will be active, but we will be transcendental. That's that's huge because that's what that's the main thing that uh, that trips us up, isn't it? Right, Rajagun, Tamagun, the Tamagun, very sleepy, or lazy, don't feel like doing anything, right? Or your mind has some stupid ideas, and then right, the Rajagun, so much passion and greed and uh, lusty desires. So these things, they uh, they can kill us right? They choke our bhakti a lot. So Krishna says, uh, that's, a, that's a big benefit, that the more you think of me, really, um, then you'll become transcendental to the body and mind. Anything else? Someone remembers, there's more. Someone remembers from Bhagavad Gita the benefits of meditating on the Supreme Brahman, meditating on Krishna. In the sixth chapter, there's some verses. Fifth chapter, there's some verses. Are you, you going to uh, You can get transcendental bliss by remembering Krishna. Yes, in Which the sixth chapter. Yes. Uh, right, there's that verse that uh, thus, uh, thus realizing the Supreme Absolute, the yogi uh, experiences transcendental bliss uh, unlimitedly and never becomes shaken. Yeah. And then in the fifth chapter, the verses that uh, because of being situated in transcendental happiness, the devotee is not attached to uh, happiness and distress and other things of this world. It becomes peaceful, right? What's that? Bhoktaram jagatapasam sabaloka maheshwaram suradam sabaputanam yajgyatva shantim. That's okay. right? Very big about shanti. Om shanti. Om shanti. So Krishna says, Yajgatva Shantam Richiti, that if you understand me as the supreme controller, supreme enjoyer, proprietor, the supreme friend, then you will attain Shanti. So we don't we don't accept sometimes people will accuse, oh, you're just living for the future. No. No, we, we have good benefits right now. We have good benefit package. It's not just pension when I retire. You know, and maybe the pension fund will be gone. Uh, but right now, right now, I can have more peace, uh, more joy inside, more inner strength. So these are all benefits that we can have right now. And as Arya Govinda pointed out in the beginning, you know, when uh, something happens, uh, then we will go back to Godhead. 
So there's always meditating on Krishna. And here's another one. Tesham satatam yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upiyantate. Uh, that those who worship me with love and devotion, I give them intelligence. So if we, when we meditate on Krishna, uh, super soul, uh, then we will be that much closer to all knowledge. Uh, as it said, the spiritual master is the external representation of super soul because uh, he is directly guided by super soul. There, the spiritual master is able to hear Christian, uh, either directly or uh, you may you may say indirectly by directly uh, inspiring the intelligence. So we want that, don't we? We don't. We want to have the best directions. You know, when we're traveling in some foreign place, we want to have, you know, Google Maps or some kind of very good direction. Turn left. Turn right. Isn't it? So we are we are traveling a somewhat dangerous road. Uh, for some of us, it's perhaps a little more dangerous, uh, and we want always good advice. Uh, we get good advice uh, from the spiritual master. We get good advice from mentors and other devotees, and from the scripture. And we are also able to get. We also do get a good advice from within. Right. Krishna is our best, best friend uh, in that regard. Perhaps, uh, perhaps I'm sure each of us can think of some tricky situation. It could have been in your family, dealing with your spouse, children, could be at work. It could be uh, in your devotional, direct devotional activities that we didn't know what to do. And uh, we could we could have made a very wrong choice but we got good good intelligence didn't we that do this and we did it and everything was okay or it was better than it could have been um, yeah and, and isn't it in very tricky situations you want to have the, the correct the correct information right you know, if you're a surgeon and you're doing brain surgery, <laughs> you want to know what to do next. You don't want to be confused, right? So, Pesham Satyatam Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. By our devotion and by our meditating on Krishna, we will get uh, guidance, uh, which won't be available otherwise. You know, the, the, the channel becomes clouded, right? Like radio, you know, radio or even the, the television, sometimes the channel, it's uh, it's uh, not clear. You know, you get all the static and the, you, you can't hear it. So this is what happens when we break our sadhana, or we, especially when we break the regulative principles, is that we we cloud the channel. And this is one reason why we see uh, devotees fall away because the channel becomes clouded. They don't get the right direction. They make the wrong choices. They they don't they don't uh, they don't get the right. They don't hear the right direction, uh, and uh, then uh, there's more difficulty, as Lord Krishna says. The mode of ignorance brings more tamagun. So we want to stay as far away from tama and rajagun as possible. Uh, it's miserable for one thing. So there's one verse. Uh, uh, it's quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in different places. I think it's for sure it's in the Adi Lila in the first, first or second chapter, and it's uh, quoted by uh, Krishnadas Kabiraj Goswami. And I believe it's it's a verse. It's either spoken by Lord Brahma or Uddhava. And the verse reads uh, along these lines that uh, sages and saints will never be able to fully express their indebtedness to you because you, Krishna, appear in two features. You appear as the spiritual master without and you appear as the super soul within uh, to guide us back to the spiritual world. 
So such precious, precious, valuable uh, people who guide us uh, uh, from uh, the cycle of birth and death uh, back to the eternal spiritual world, the spirit to master without and from within, uh, the voice of our consciousness. Right, Savasuta Hamridi Sani Basta, Mata Smitter Gyanam Apahonam. So indebted we are. I mean, forget about spiritual life, forget Krishna Bhakti. Anyone or everyone is getting this direction what to do. Uh, anyone who's successful, uh, it means that they're empowered. You think of anyone, uh, celebrity, uh, athlete, politician business person, how are they so successful? They have empowered, they have empowered intelligence, for one thing. Uh, what to do? They make the right decisions. So all of us have different uh, degrees of this empowerment, depending on our past activities. And for Krishna Bhakti, we will all, we will all, uh, be empowered, our intelligence, our mind will be empowered uh, by our sadhana and the blessings of higher uh, authorities. Uh, this was explained by uh, in Krishna, in the 10th canto, in the story of Sudama Brahman and Lord Krishna. Uh, and Lord Krishna says that, uh, well, first, uh, you may remember the story that Lord Krishna and Sudama Brahman, they were in the ashram of Sandipani Muni. So he sent them out to get wood for fire, and it was a big storm, and they were lost. So finally they were found, and uh, the guru said, uh, Sandipani Muni said that, I am so happy with you that you're willing to accept botheration for me, headache for me, and I give you this blessing that the Vedas will always remain fresh in your mind. You will never forget the instructions of the Vedas. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada comments that, you know, by the blessings of the spiritual master, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this is a kind of blessing. Srila Prabhupada writes this in the Nectar Devotion, that for one who serves the spiritual master without reservation, you know, we have a service attitude. What can I do? What can I do for you? Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be some big thing. We don't have to be giving 500 pounds a month to the temple. We don't have to be distributing, you know, 100 books a week or something. No. Each of us can do something, and Krishna knows what we can do. He knows what we can't do. He knows everything. So uh, uh, for each of us, whatever we can do, sincerely, uh, that will be that will be seen. That will be seen. And we can receive uh, transcendental blessings, what they call grace. So Srila Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Devotion that for one who serves the spiritual master with enthusiasm, the regulative principles become easier to follow. Uh, less obstacles, more strength. So we know that there's uh, Kripa City, there's, there's success by just mercy. And then there's sadhana city, which means uh, by our effort. So we, mostly by sadhana, but we can also have uh, creep, kripa, mercy. And we should try for that. We should not be lazy <laughs> and just, you know, wait for something to fall from the sky and, and, and you know, but we should do our regular sadhana and at the same time look for opportunities to get blessings. You know, in the Mahabharata, there are many instances, isn't it, uh, when uh, Karna and uh, Arjuna and other personalities, they served the Guru. And because of serving their spiritual master, they became so blessed. Uh, and not just the spiritual master, uh, any qualified Brahmin, who's dear to Krishna, especially a qualified Brahminical creature, the more the person is dear to Krishna, the more uh, the more uh, benefit there is 
uh, by offering seva to that person. So we should look for those opportunities. We should be greedy. Uh, we should be a little greedy and enthusiastic to make as much profit as possible uh, so we can uh, develop our love of God and go back to the spiritual world. And even in this life, even in this life, why should we have to struggle with Anartas and Rajagun and Tamagun more than we have to? We can make it easier for ourselves uh, by following the sadhana and getting blessings. Uh, there's so many examples. We are very much encouraged uh, to uh, be profiteers. Some of us may have some business inclination or we like to make money or so make profit like this, make Krishna Bhakti profit. Yes. There, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's one narration of a, a devotee who would hide in the bushes. He would hide uh, near this uh, more advanced devotee's house. And when the devotee ate, and then, of course, in India, it's a little different. Uh, maybe there too, I don't know. But sometimes the, the organic uh, trash is just put in the ground somewhere put in the bushes. So he would go and he would get the mango pits and he would eat them, suck them. He would eat the peels because he understood that by doing this, he would uh, absorb the uh, Krishna Bhakti uh, vibrations of this more advanced devotee and Krishna would be pleased to see his humility. Yes, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, Maha Prasadam is the remnants of Krishna. And uh, what is left from the eating of very advanced devotees, really, truly advanced devotees, is maha, maha prasad. So, so many opportunities we can try for. It's available, just like in, school, in college or high school, isn't it? You can just do the work, or you can ask for extra project, right? Can I have extra credit project, right? Or sometimes the teacher will give them, here is extra credit if anyone wants it. So it's up to us. It's up to us. No one will do it for us. So we've been, we've been talking on this verse, uh, you know, how this spiritual knowledge it comes in specific succession, and it's not something that we can see or experience right away. Uh, we can hear it. We can follow the process. Uh, and most important part of this process is always remembering and never forgetting Krishna. So we all have some questions and comments. Anything? This this process, uh, uh, the, the the two processes of uh, going back to God, had uh, mentioned uh, by Vivek. I mean, Shukadeva Goswami, uh, which is traveling to the different higher planets and then meditating and then going, uh, having a. So this looks almost impossible in this in this age of Kali, and uh, the only the only uh, way possible uh, is uh, the the Sankirtana movement. What Prabhupada has uh, you know started as his con. Yeah. So without that, I think I don't think anybody can even think of uh, reaching Krishna's abode. <laughs> No, I mean, Krishna himself, as you say, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Keva, Kolo, Nasteva, Nasteva. Got there on your time. Uh, what's that other verse? Uh, it's in the 11th canto about uh, uh, that in the age, that this age of Kali is Kalir, Nija, Raja, Dosha. Then in this age of Kali, uh, it is full of faults, but there's one good thing, as you say, uh, the Hari Nama. Simply by Harinam Sankirtan. And specifically, uh, as I, I was reminded again, a lot depends upon our attitude, our feeling. Uh, you know, when we call out with feeling, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama Hare Hare, like a child uh, with feeling. Oh, uh, there's no way I can do this. Please help me. Um, there's, it's, we get more response than if we're chanting mechanically. 
you know, just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like a machine. Of course, that does have benefit. But so we say all, that Hari Nam is the only way, but and uh, also uh, with understanding about quality of chanting. So we want to work work on that. Uh, the, the attitude uh, and the attention, the attentiveness, not letting our mind wander. Yep. I'm not going to go back that way. That That's for sure. I don't know anything about the Vedas or all these things. When I was growing up, relatives would say there'll be no talk of God in this house. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not someone who's going to do it the long way. Any other uh, comments, questions? Of course, you know, there's one thing I appreciate. Well, maybe I am a very a fallen uh, Westerner. But then I'm a little bit more eligible for mercy. <laughs> you know, so we all are. We all are. You know, we're all in this age of Kali uh, at a deficit. Some other questions? Discussion? As Prabhupada said that the mercy is available just like a rain. Rain mercy, rain falls on the earth and also falls on the, the sea. But it's upon us to take the, the benefit of the, the rain. We have to come out. We have to come out and then take the rain. If you are sitting inside the house, the mercy cannot be uh, you know uh, uh, taken advantage of. Very good. So what about this? Well, I'm following uh, for past year, three years, six years, I've been doing everything pretty much, but I, I still, there's so many difficult, I don't feel like I'm making so much advancement. So what's that? What do we say to that? What if, what if we as, ask ourselves? As Krishna said, we should have patience like uh, Krishna has told Arjuna that, you know, we have to practice Abhyasa, meaning... But I've been doing for three years, six years, every day. I mean, I've been chanting hundreds of thousands of names of Krishna. What, what is this? Same, you think? <laughs> yeah, but we have no choice to other than to have patience. That's true, yeah. We have no choice. Anyone else? Some ideas? What do we tell ourselves? Or what do we say to someone who asks this? I'm still bothered by so many wrong thoughts. Or I don't feel so much attraction for Krishna. Why? Why? Why is it? What are some reasons that we may not be feeling for Krishna? more too much someone remember engrossed. too much materially engrossed right too too much distracted yeah that's in bhagavad gita something else has anyone heard something what can block our experience of krishna is it the um being in the mode of nature that sort of prevents us from getting further, mm. thinking further. Yes, yes. Just uh, the nature of our constitution at the moment. Uh, yeah. Any is other? It, is it also our past, our past karmas and so that we have accumulated? And we have yes. accumulated so much of it that we really need the prayer. Um, a, a great deal more and shouldn't have these great expectations to have yes. them cleared suddenly. We, I mean, we can't understand it. We don't know what we've done, but that's the only way, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just for example, uh, each of us could go outside in the rain and roll in the ground. And uh, someone rolls in the ground for five minutes, someone 10 minutes, and then so muddy and dirty, it takes longer to wash the clothes, no? Right? As you said, you know, 
uh, depends on how dirty. Let's suppose you have a diamond. And so then someone has a diamond and it has one millimeter of black coal and someone has 20 millimeter. So it takes longer. So that's, that's it. That's very good. And then according to what we have done, the layers are thicker. And we see that. We see there's different, there's, we, we've seen devotees that, that they join and then, you know, in four years they've taken sannyas. They're just like a rocket ship, you know. And then other people, you see them maybe once a year and, you know, you don't, they're kind of lost. So we're all different. Anything else? Other reasons why we don't experience what we hear pure devotees experiencing when they see the deity, when they chant Hare Krishna. What else blocks, Vaishnava can block? What? Vaishnava Prats. Vaishnava Prats. Aparads. Yes. Yeah. That, that's, I think that that's, because uh, we're already, we already have our millimeters of covering, but offenses. And this is, this is described as very, very main reason other than our habits, past habits. Uh, as Arya Govinda said, the worst is Vaishnava Aparat. When we hurt the feelings, or even worse, physically, uh, any devotee, but aspect, the more uh, dear to Krishna who we hurt, not good. Not good. Krishna will help us learn not to do that by taking away our attraction for him. If, if we feel, you know, especially for two, three, four, five days, I don't feel like chanting. I just want to watch the television. Or I don't feel like looking at the deity. It could be that we have made offenses of some kind. Um, what are some of the different, there's different types of offenses. What are some different offenses? There's Vaishnava Aparan. There's other Aparans. Who remembers? To consider the holy name to be, uh, you know, imagination. imagination. Yeah, Nama Aparan. It's a little late. So Nama Aparan, Seva Aparan, Deity Aparan. So perhaps the main main ones are the Vaishnava Aparan, the Nama Aparan. Nama Aparad is mostly cured just by being attentive. If we're very careful just to listen to each syllable, the other uh, offenses will be taken care of. Because we're doing the other offenses, uh, well, we're not attentive because of the other factors. So if we're just if we're attentive, that would take care of most of that. The other one is deity Aparad, which may not be applicable for all of us, but especially if someone is having installed deities or even uh, uninstalled that you have been doing the same seva for months or years uh, and you uh, they are listed in the nectar of devotion. Uh, that, can, uh, that is an offense. Uh, deity operat, especially with installed deities. Uh, that's why usually for people, not usually outside the temple, we want to have deities of uh, Nittai Goranga and Jagannath Balaram Subhadra, because they don't accept, no, we shouldn't be sloppy, but they don't accept, they will not take offense nearly as much, or way less than Radha Krishna. We should be very careful not to begin regular, we can keep photos and offer uh, flowers, but we should not begin some regular, every day I'm going to do this, um, unless it's a very simple thing with Radha Krishna whether it's photo or murti, anything. Uh, not not advised. So, uh, Vaishnava Aparad, Nam Aparad. So these Aparads, they manifest with a lack of uh, our attraction goes down. So that's... Um, and uh, the cure, uh, we are advised to pay special attention to the worship of Nittai Goranga. Lord Chaitanya Nityananda. We should never think, oh, I'm done with them. Now I'm just Radha Krishna. Now I'm just Ram Sita. Sita Ram. No. No. Uh, the uh, chanting, singing before the deities, photos, murtis of Lord Chaitanya Nityananda 
specifically is a cure for our offenses. So that's very valuable. That's good to know. Uh, if someone thinks they're just going to focus on Radha Krishna, maybe one or two rare souls, but um, for most of us, no. Uh, so, uh, ask, we, we chant Hare Krishna in front of them, or we sing Kirtan in front of Chaitanya Nityananda, and we ask for their help, for their mercy. Lord Chaitanya Nityananda is so, so merciful and so enthusiastic to help us. We just have to ask a little bit. Any other questions or, or discussion? So, time to stop. Yes. I, I'll just share very quickly. Uh, there was some period I was I was making some kind of offenses. I know, so I sat in front of uh, Lord Chaitanya Nityananda. It was in the, the temple uh, here in Boston, this city, I remember. So uh, every day, I just sat and I chanted. I tried to have confidence that it would work. And uh, I was thinking, I was praying inside my heart, may I please appreciate Srila Prabhupada. May I please appreciate you. And I tell you the truth. I mean, it, that this is, I may be dramatic, but it felt like this. It felt like I got strapped to a rocket and the rocket ship took off. It was so dramatic. It was like, whoa. I was, uh, I can remember I was in uh, Guru Puja, you know, singing, you know, the prayers. And I was trying to appreciate. So, I mean, two things is that we pray and then we also try to make some effort. So I was making some effort. What does this mean? What do the words mean? And all these realizations started coming, just like uh, monsoon. And I was just, just crying. I was just like, oh, wow, Srila Prabhupada is so wonderful. And Lord Chaitanya is so wonderful. Oh, Krishna is God. And I was, I was just uh, losing my mind almost because it was just, you know, as I said, I don't come from very good background. So it was just so astounding. Also, that it worked. That, you know, because I, oh, it worked. And I started banging on the door of the temple president because I was taking, I was in charge of the cooking, the deity kitchen. So I was, I, I, I want to go out, please. I don't want to stay. I want to go out and give these books. Let me go out. Everyone has to know about this. I was some crazy person. <laughs> but uh, so it uh, it works. You know, apparently at least it worked for me. Uh, just a little bit of prayer. A little, because in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they are glorified that Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda have appeared specifically to uh, give love of God. So if we add, I mean, you can ask for Mercedes or a better job. But if you ask for, oh, may I appreciate a little bit more, they will very quickly give that. Mercedes, maybe not, but a little bit more appreciation, they'll give that. You know, just have to ask. That's the thing. We have to ask and want it. Prabhuji, if, if, if you want uh, to ask uh, this, uh, this type of devotional benefit to our uh, relatives or family members, will that also uh, help uh, Prabhuji if you are praying for yes, them? And then... yes. well, what is that? That's I think that's a verse uh, in the 11th canto. I can't remember the whole verse, but in the age of Kali, the way of worshiping Krishna is some kirtan jagya. So whether you want rain, you want this, you want your relative to be a better devotee, whatever it may, especially that, then just sit in front of Chaitanya Nitadanda and sing bhaja and ask. May my uncle become more interested and then see what happens. <laughs> it might not be so dramatic, but uh, most probably there'll be something. Yeah. Yeah. So we are late. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Um, uh, there are not many people today. Um, I'll, I'll end the session by saying thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts and then 
sharing all the experiences you have uh, uh, in in this particular verse and then a lot of points came out and then uh, we discussed a lot of beautiful points on the, from the bhagavad gita from the bhagavatam so it's really um, uh, we take this and then go to the next day so we take every day at a time and then we progress in a little bit by bit in krishna consciousness yes thank you so much prabhu uh, at least we know about it you know yeah. yes yes right? that's, that's, our, that's our fortune because of uh, ashila prabhupada and then the guru guru varga so i thank uh, thank you prabhu ji and then i request uh, the devotees to unmute and then chant hari krishna mahamantra once glorification in glorification of uh, his grace dinasharan prabhu hare krishna hare krishna krishna hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare vancha kalpatarubhyascha krupa sindubhya evacha patitanam pavanibhyo vishnu vibhyo namo namaha shila prabhupa next week he yeah. joined next week i'll share what happened 3 or 4 days after that thank you prabhu thank you we are wait, we'll be yes. waiting for everyone that. be well everyone be thank well you. hari krishna thank you thank you prabhu thank you hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna Thank you.